Technology is redefining the seafarers' roles. What skills do you believe will be essential for the seafarer of the future in 10 to 25 years' time? Thanks for asking this question, actually. It's interesting because I think it's redefining everybody's role, not only seafarers. So I will start actually with chief executive of the company. He will need to think what company he wants to run. Does he want to run a digital company or old-fashioned? And if old-fashioned, does he supply people with skills and uh, support? And if he wants the company to be cutting edge and everything, what is he doing to support his seafarers? I believe that the most important question here would be how well are we going to support seafarers? Uh, how well are we preparing the office staff? Because seafarers will not evolve themselves. Somebody needs to provide the equipment, somebody needs to provide uh, environment and work with them and support them. So that would be my answer. I probably don't answer directly to you, but I'm pretty sure I cover those areas which people completely forget and expect that all of this will happen suddenly and comes from nowhere. It's not going to be Great. that way. Great. Uh, so some say the profession of seafaring is experiencing an evolution uh, with the future seafarer being able to master new technology uh, as well as good seamanship. So what can be done to help transfer the knowledge of old of the old to the skills of the new? Again, I think I'll come back to the answer on my first question. If we support seafarers, if we create an environment where seafarer is flourishing, then seafarer will flourish. If you look after your people, people will look after your business. And that's the old adage which every good master remembers. I, my role on board of the ship is to make sure that my people are safe and they are comfortable. If I can provide that, then they will adapt. And seafarers were always very resilient and very adaptable. So I'm, I'm fully confident that this will happen again. This will continue to. Okay. Speaking of being adaptable, um, if you could pick a single challenge for crewing in the next 10 years, what would it be? Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge for crewing at the moment is if we take the context and 90% of all seafarers are being hired and fired, that is a challenge because we need to motivate those people who are hired and then towards the end of the contract they start thinking what's the future for me? I'm going home, will I be employed? So good crew managers will master that, they will motivate their people, they will ensure that they are actually the very important link between the seafarer and the owner of the ship and I wish crew managers start seeing themselves as a very important part of the chain not just putting the bumps on seats as we say that making sure that i've got a name and i can allocate this name to the name of the vessel this is not going to work in the future i hope i hope the future of good quality ship managers and therefore good quality ships lies with somebody who masters this opportunity as well to be a link between the owner and the crew member Okay. And finally, uh, why is an event of this nature important to the industry? Well, because we come from all over the world and then we've got a chance to actually exchange thoughts and see how we are interacting. I take a lot of kick out of the questions being asked, for example, not necessarily answers provided, but I gauge the industry. I can see how people start thinking, what they are afraid, where the fears are. Uh, are we really talking um, business here or are we you know, beating bush around and basically not necessarily knowing where we are. And um, I'm a bit frustrated today, to be perfectly honest, because I think that the baseline, some people are self-professing, professing, thinking that it's true that there is a shortage of seafarers. There isn't a shortage of seafarers. When people are talking about 75% of seafarers would not be employed if there is no internet on board. Well, I'm sorry, and you know, you can pixelize that, it's bullshit. It's, it's not true. The truth is, these young people who are behind you, they would love to go to sea, and they are denied that at the moment. And um, they wouldn't care less whether there is internet on board or not. They, the, the Maslow's, Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs for them is, I need job, I need to go and work somewhere. Whether I've got internet or not is a secondary issue. And that's not what the pundits are trying to tell us at the moment. But then I would suggest pundits talk to these young people. And regardless whether they are from Philippines or Fleetwood, or Warsaw, as a matter of a fact, or even Gdańsk, Gdynia, or whatever, any a European country, young people want to go to sea. And as a shipping industry, we are denying this access. We are not employing them at the moment. We are not giving them a chance to actually get the practical knowledge during their sea time, because we are not providing sea time. So let's not 
in ourselves about the internet. It is important, don't get me wrong. Everybody nowadays loves mobile phone and we are all using applications and everything. But let's not fool ourselves. The, the, the bread and butter and money is the very first thing young people need to put on the table before they start thinking of buying a mobile phone. Yeah. Okay? Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you.